Hi and welcome to Temeco. In this video, we are going to discuss about the other type of motion that a particle can have, which is curvilinear motion. During this video, we'll learn the definition of curvilinear motion of a particle and get familiar with the aspects that describe this kind of motion. Let's get started. So how does curvilinear motion of a particle differ from rectilinear motion? Well, the difference is that in curvilinear motion, the particle moves along a curved path, whereas in rectilinear motion, the particle moves along a straight line. Another difference is that since in curvilinear motion, the path of the particle is often three-dimensional, we need to analyze the particle's position, velocity, and acceleration by using vector analysis. In vector analysis, we can describe the motion of a particle along a curved path by using Cartesian notation, which includes the Cartesian vectors i, j, and k. For instance, we can define the location of the particle p on a curved path by using the following position vector, r equals xi plus yj plus zk. Likewise, the velocity of the particle on the curved path can also be represented by using the Cartesian notation. You may remember from the previous video that the instantaneous velocity of a particle in rectilinear motion was represented by using the following equation, v equals dr by dt. Now in curvilinear motion, this equation becomes v equals dr by dt equals vxi plus vyj plus vzk. As you can see, the direction of the velocity vector is always tangential to the path of the particle. Finally, we can obtain the acceleration of the particle on the curved path by taking the first time derivative of the velocity equation that we just presented. Thus, the acceleration of the particle on the curved path can be determined as follows. a equals dv by dt equals axi plus ayj plus azk. Notice that since acceleration a represents the time rate of change in velocity, the acceleration vector will not be a tangent to the path of the particle. In some cases, when we know the path along which the particle is moving, it could be more convenient for us to use a special kind of coordinate system called anti-coordinate system. The t-axis acts as a tangent for the curve at the location of the particle p, and its positive direction is towards the increasing s, which represents the position of the particle on the curve. We will use the unit vector ut to represent this positive direction. Likewise, the n-axis acts as the normal for the curve at the same location of the particle p and is perpendicular to the t-axis. Its positive direction is towards the center of the curvature O dash, for which we'll use the unit vector un to represent it. Because the position of the particle s is a function of time, we could solve the velocity of the particle on this curved path by taking the time derivative of the path function s equals s of t, which leads to the following equation, v equals v times ut, where v equals ds by dt equals s dot. We can now also describe the acceleration vector a by using the velocity vector which we just determined and taking the time derivative of it, which leads us to the final following equation, a equals at times ut plus an times un where at is the tangential acceleration of the particle, which can be written as follows, at equals v dot, and an is the normal acceleration of the particle, which can be written as follows, an equals v squared by rho, where rho is the radius of the curvature. Note that both acceleration vectors at and an are perpendicular to each other. Therefore, we can solve the magnitude of acceleration as follows a equals square root over a t squared plus a n squared. Hopefully by watching this video, you know the definition of curvilinear motion of a particle, and you are also familiar with the aspects that describe this kind of motion. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.